Now listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions. Hi, Max. How are you? Hi, Melanie. I'm fine. In fact, I'm preparing the coming holidays, and I want to have a car tour with my friends. That sounds lovely. How is your preparation? Well, I haven't begun yet because I'm not quite sure how to rent a car and what the expense is like, and something like this. Ha! <laughs> You've run into the right person. I did the same last holiday, and I can recommend it to you. I went to Avis Rent a Car Company, which is at 14A Dover Road, Oxford. Let me write it down. Is it D O V E R? Yes, and the telephone number is six three four zero nine six three. But if you book for the first time, dial another number with extension. That is six three four zero eight five three. Extension fifty-four. Okay, thank you very much. I'll have a try. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to read questions. Now listen to the conversation between Max and the assistant. Good morning, Avis Rent a Car Company. How can I help you? Hi, I want to book a car for tour. I want to inquire some information about the grade of the cars and the prices. No problem. We offer a wide selection of rental cars to choose from, from luxury car to economy car, compact car, minivan, and pickup truck. Well,、uh, luxury car is obviously out of my price range, but compact or economy is not big enough. You know, we have seven persons together. Well, how about a minivan? It's perfect for road trips and will make your journey feel like you're in a living room on wheels. I think that's good. Well, what does it feature? I, I mean, what facilities does it have? Unlike most minivans with manual transmission, the rental minivan cars have feature automatic transmission, air conditioning, and AM/FM stereo. If you drive a long, smooth way, you can use the cruise control, which will save you a lot of energy. Good. How much is the price? If you rent an intermediate one, it will cost you fifty-five pounds each day. If it is standard, the cost is forty-five pounds per day. I think the standard is enough. Oh, we have a special fifty percent discount for weekends from Friday to Sunday, but that doesn't apply to tax, recovery fees, and optional services. Well, what are the optional services? Well, they usually include some extra facilities like first aid kit or something like that.、Uh, I know. We plan to start off on Friday, so we have to prepare one day in advance. I want to book from thirtieth of April, which is Thursday. And it will end next Monday. Okay. Could you leave your name and the driving license number? My name is Max, and the license number is M nine zero two one. Okay. You can pick up the car on Thursday noon. Besides, we offer some optional services like street maps, flashlight, and sunsheet. What would you like to have?、Mm, flashlight is not necessary, I think. But street maps are useful, especially when we drive in a strange place. As for the sun sheet, I'd like to give that a miss. We don't want to spend too much extra money. Okay, Mr. Max. Thank you for calling. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part two. Part two. You'll hear someone talking to a group of university students. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Upton University. I hope you are settling in and beginning to find your way around. I know how confusing it can be when you start life at university, and that's why we have Freshers' Week to help you find your feet. Before I go any further, I should perhaps introduce myself. My name is Sally Jackson, and I am the Secretary of the Students' Union, which has organized this week of events for you. You will usually find me in the office on the first floor of this building when I'm not attending lectures. Anyway, down to business. Of course, there are a few things that you are obliged to get done during your first week here, but once you've opened a bank account, if you haven't got one already, senior director of studies to discuss which courses you are going to take and signed up with a doctor, there will be plenty of time left to enjoy the events we have arranged for the week. And have we got a lot lined up for you. Throughout the week from Monday to Friday, Every morning, starting at 10 a.m., there will be orientation and welfare events. These will include tours of the campus, which, as you have probably noticed, is the size of a small town with 9,000 residential students, as well as sessions on developing study skills. We also have tours of Upton itself arranged for you, with a bus leaving from outside this building every afternoon at 5 o'clock. There are a number of interesting things to do and see in and around Upton, so you can expect visits to the castle and museum, as well as the popular Ghost Walk. You'll need to sign up for this one, as numbers are limited. Just put your name on the list on the notice board in the entrance lobby. An important event is scheduled for Monday, that's the day after tomorrow, when we will be holding the academic fair. This is an opportunity for you to speak to students and academic staff about the courses that are on offer. The academic fair starts at 1 o'clock, by the way. There are a couple of other fairs that I think will interest you. First of all, we have the Society's Fair on Tuesday the 16th, which I think is an absolute must. You might not believe it, but the university has over 150 societies and sports clubs you can sign up for, so you are sure to find something of interest to you. That also starts at 1 o'clock, and it will be here in the Union Building. Also in this building is the Trade Fair on Wednesday, from 2 until 5 in the afternoon. This one might sound a bit strange because you will find a load of banks and other businesses here trying to get your custom. You will find plenty of bargains and, best of all, a lot of the businesses give away stuff for free. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. We've also got a great entertainment program lined up for you, starting tonight with our welcoming party. We have a top band lined up for your entertainment, but I'm not allowed to say who they are. All I can say is that I am sure you will not be disappointed.
So come along to Blackmore Hall at 9 o'clock this evening to get your university experience off to a flying start. Just one point. I'm afraid this event is limited to freshers only. Because of space restrictions, you can't bring a friend tonight. Sorry about that. There's more fun and games on Monday in the Cotswold Theater here on campus. We have booked two of the cleverest comedians in the country, Paul Frazier and Jenny Brown, for a three-hour show. Paul has assured us that he and Jenny have packed the show with new material, and as they always get rave reviews for their shows, I think we can look forward to an evening of great entertainment. That's in the Cotswold Theater on Monday evening at 7.30. Moving along a bit, on Thursday, there is an important date for your diaries. This is the official Freshers' opening ceremony, when the dean welcomes you to Upton University. So remember, Thursday the 18th from 2.30 to 3.30 in Blackmore Hall. You certainly should go to this one, and by the way, light refreshments will be available. At the end of the week, on Saturday, you have the chance to dress up in your smartest evening wear for the official Freshers' Ball. Actually, although it's called a ball, it is quite a relaxed affair, so we are more than happy if you turn up wearing jeans and a t-shirt. The important thing is to relax and enjoy yourselves. Time and place are the same as for this evening's party. Blackmore Hall from 9 in the evening to 3 o'clock in the morning. Right. I think I've covered the most important and exciting events we have lined up for you, but there will be plenty of other things going on throughout the week, so remember to check the notice board in the entrance lobby regularly. Enjoy the rest of the day, and I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible this evening at the welcoming party. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a discussion between three students, David, Joseph, and Carrie. In the first part of the discussion, they will be talking about lounges in different school buildings on campus. First look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen to the first part of the discussion and answer questions 21 to 24. Hey, Joseph. Long time no see. How's it going? Oh, hey, David. It's going fine. I'm a little overwhelmed with all these new courses, but I'm hanging in there. Have you met my girlfriend, Carrie? No. Hi, Carrie. Hi, David. Joseph told me about you. You two had quite the time last semester in European history, I hear. Yeah, we like to hang out after class. Now it's a little harder, though. Lounges aren't as good as they were back there in Wilson Hall. Yeah, they had chairs, couches and tables to put your stuff on. And that lounge was full. There must have been 25 seats in there. Really? The lounge in Jones Hall, where I have my communications course, only has about ten chairs. It's awful. We all just stand around or leave. I wish we could hang out more. Well, Agriculture Hall is next door. Their lounge is on the first floor, 
and it has couches. I think there are about six of them, and they're comfortable and hardly used at all. That's not a good idea. Thanks. But don't go to lounge at Skidmore Hall. I don't even know why they call it a lounge. It's just four chairs in the corner of the main walkway. In the second part of the discussion, David, Joseph, and Carrie continue talking about conducting a survey. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Guys, we should really do something about those lounges. I mean, couldn't we gather signatures and try to get the university to improve some of the facilities? Yeah, that's a great idea. But we can't just say something random like, oh, you need to make the buildings nicer. We should come up with some kind of ranking system and have students rank buildings, how beautiful they are, how nice they are, etc. Well, if we were ranking on a scale of 1 to 3, you all know that I would rank Skidmore Hall a 1. Like I just said, that place is awful. No facilities. The bathrooms are way down in the basement. You're right. But they do have a nice balcony on the third floor. That might increase its value. But you shouldn't rank the architecture. You should rank how nice the building is for students to hang out in. Oh, OK. Then I agree with you. So should we do this? I think it's a great idea. But let's try it ourselves on a couple buildings so that we can work out any bugs in it. I think Wilson Hall is the best. Sure, but we've already begun. We will give a building one point if it has poor facilities, not enough chairs and no vending machines, that kind of thing. And give a building two points if it is OK or acceptable. We can rank buildings that we really like as having three points. So like Joseph said, I think Wilson Hall is the best. It should have three points for sure. And Skidmore has a one. Now what other buildings should we rank? How about Merris Hall? No, they're not done with that one yet. But it looks like that will be a good place to hang out. How about Agriculture Hall? You said something about that hall a bit earlier. Oh yeah. They have that lounge with couches that no one uses. But that might indicate that people don't hang out there for other reasons. They don't have any drink machines. That's why I never go there. Oh, well, then I think it's an average building. Let's give it the middle ranking. I agree. It could be improved slightly, but it's got a couple of nice features. I like that lounge in that third floor, for example, but the stairs are too short. I always trip when I'm walking up them. This ranking is getting complex. OK, one building we haven't talked about is Canton Hall. What do you guys think of Canton? Is that next to the law building? Yep. It's got this excellent connecting corridor with chairs and desks to relax and work at. The cafeteria there is great too. I think that place is just as good as Wilson. Well, I've only been there once and didn't know that was what it was called. It was kind of confusing, and it's kind of far for me to go, but I liked it. So I'll give it the middle ranking, two points because it had nice facilities, but a poor and confusing layout. Oh, Joseph, you like Canton Hall? I hate that place. It's so mechanical, cold and impersonal. The furniture is nice, sure, but it's the last place on campus I would go to. I give it a one. Interesting. Well, let's write this little survey up and start passing it around. I don't have time to type it up. Can you? Sure. I'll do it after my biology class. Should we meet up at Wilson tonight around eight? Sure. No problem. We'll see you then. That is the end of part three.
You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a conversation between two students about studying abroad. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Hey Mary, how's school going? Haven't seen you in a while. What have you been up to? John, good to see you again. I've been really busy the last couple of weeks. I'm applying to study abroad next year. Really? So am I. I think it will be a great experience to be able to study in another country. What country do you want to go to? At first I wanted to study in Africa, but my parents really don't want me to go there because they think it will be dangerous. So now I'm thinking about going to Spain, Italy or Japan. Actually, I think Africa would be a fascinating place. I would want to go there to visit. Maybe not to study, but definitely I would want to go visit. For next year I want to go to either China or Germany to study, but my parents can't afford any European countries, so maybe... Why China or Germany? Well, I want to go to China because I think it's a really interesting country with a long history. Plus, it has been changing so much, and I think it is a great time to be there. I really want to improve my Chinese also, and I've been taking Mandarin courses the last two semesters. I would want to go to Germany because my mother is German, and I want to learn more about my cultural background. How about you? Why the countries you chose? Well, I want to go to a Spanish-speaking country. I took Spanish in high school, so I figure if I go to a Spanish-speaking country, I'll be better off knowing some of the language already. But I have already been to Mexico many times, and South American countries don't have classes for my major, except for Brazil, but they mostly speak Portuguese there. I would want to go to Italy because I want to do a study about ancient Roman civilization. It has always been a dream of mine to go and see Pompeii and the volcanic ruins. Plus, my family has Italian roots and I love Italian food. I want to go to Japan mainly because my girlfriend was born in Japan and always tells me all of these fascinating stories about Japanese history and culture. I am a big fan of sumo wrestling also. So I've always wanted to see a sumo match in person. I really love sushi and almost all Japanese food. Recently, I have started to watch some Japanese baseball too. But of course, these are all secondary reasons. My main reason is of course my girlfriend and understanding her culture. I don't speak any Japanese though, so that is my major drawback. I think it is much better to go to a country if you can speak the language. That's great. When do you have to decide by? I have to finish all my applications this week. I'm really stressed trying to finish everything, on top of all my schoolwork. I'm almost done with my applications. I just have to finish the Italy application. I think my last choice is Italy, so I'm doing that one last. How long do you want to go for? I think I'm only going to go abroad for one semester, or else I won't be able to graduate on time. I have many classes left until I can finish my degree, and I'm not sure if I will be able to take them studying out of the country. 
I think I might be able to study in Spain because my Spanish is fluent, but definitely not in Italy or Japan, unless they have classes offered in English. I want to go for a year. I've heard that it's better to go for a year because you get a full experience and get a better grasp on the language. But I understand that most people can't finish their degree in time. It was hard trying to decide which country I would rather go to, but I think my first choice is to go to China. I know Germany will be great also. Either way, I will be thrilled to have the opportunity to study there. What's your first choice? I really don't have one. Actually, I think I'm like you. Just being able to study in another country will be great. Either Japan or Spain will be awesome. Italy will be awesome too. But I've been there a bunch of times, so I think I prefer to go somewhere else. Sounds exciting. We'll have to go to class now. It was great talking to you again. See you around next time? Yeah, sure. See you around. Hope that everything goes well. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.